Hello, besties and bosses. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. How the heck did that happen? I feel like we spent so long last year anticipating this moment. Now suddenly we're in the new year and it has been, I think it's been a lovely start to the new year. I've been enjoying all the celebrations. I also missed y'all last week. I didn't come, it was just last week that I didn't go on live, but I'm here every week. So it's always, it's always strange when I miss miss a week. I was um, reflecting to my boyfriend. I think I only missed one other live with y'all last week when I think it was the week my father passed away. So I've been with you every week. So it's, it feels like such a weird stretchy thing with time when, when I'm not in here. So I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to hang with y'all. I'm excited for today's live. That's a lot of excitement. I've got two announcements I'm going to share with you today. I think I'll share one before we dive into today's topic with you. And then I will share one of the announcements at the end of our live stream. And then what I want to talk about, what we're going to talk about today, kind of as you're hopping on now or on the replay, so you know what we're diving into, I really want to talk about the three actions you can take or that you need to take to be able to run at 2021, to be able to create your version of success and those epic results you want. So I think something that is really prevalent this time of year, but really always is we, it's so easy to get wrapped up around all the planning and the resolution setting and the intention setting, the goal setting, which is so important. I'm doing the same thing. I, I fully subscribe to that. But what I want to make sure we're not missing out on is talking about the action that drives those results. So we're going to dive into three actions that I think are essential to create those intentions, goals, resolutions, those results you want in your business in 2021. So at the end of this year, you are celebrating your wins. I'll share the mindset behind them and I'll also share some, some examples because these are actions. I really took a look at my last year, my last couple of years in business and the action side of things and what... I think really helps support me in staying fully booked. I've been fully booked for years at this point for adding that 100K cash last year, for making the 25K months that I make in business, for those results I'm getting. And so these are the actions I see beneath that. But before I dive into that, let me share one of the two announcements with you because it's something that's fun and personal and I wanna share it with all of you so you all know what's going on in my, my life. So. It's totally personal, nothing business related at all, but I want to share with all of you that over the holidays, I got engaged to my, well, he's my fiance now, my um, boyfriend of six years. We've been together for six years. He has a bonus son who I talk quite a bit about. We, it kind of feels like we're married already the way our relationship is, but we made it official and he proposed. I ha do have an engagement ring. It is being resized. I did not want an engagement ring, so it's a very non-traditional engagement ring. I have a whole... I'll spare all of you, but I have a whole thing around engagement rings. So he did he did good and he found me something very non-traditional but beautiful. And I'll share that with all of you when I get it back from being resized, which I think will be this weekend. So fun personal news to share with all of you. Thank you for the congratulations. Um, just a fun thing. And it um, was one of those things I was like, do I tell everyone about this? But it feels weird not to share with y'all because we're here hanging every week and I share so many things with all of you and I always want to be transparent. So that's what happened over the holidays. Um, it was also a very beautiful holiday. I don't know what it was like for all of you. I did a little mix of took some time off, but also worked a little bit and took some client calls because we didn't go home or I didn't go up to my parents this year because of COVID We're we're taking it really seriously. So it was a really beautiful blend this year, very different, different break, but really beautiful. So that's my, my personal, personal share with all of you, but let's dive into those three actions. So I'd love to hear from you watching now and when you're watching in the replay, how you're feeling about the start of this new year, how you feel about goal setting, how you feel about intention setting, planning, all of that in general. And then we'll just always curious to hear if, and if there's any goals or intentions you want to share with us, always fun to declare it. Something I see and something I notice with my clients, as many of you know, my coaching framework and what I support my clients through is clarity, mindset, strategy, and action. That is what I know I have seen in my own business. I have seen through my clients. That is what creates success and success on your terms, whatever that looks like for you. And I think, you know, we talk about all of these in different ways in this group, but I really want to focus on that last part of the coaching framework, the action piece. I think it gets confused very often or overlooked. I think particularly in our online space and particularly this time of year, and if you're in any of the mindset or the more spiritual side of the personal development space, I think sometimes the action side to things gets a bad rap, it gets misunderstood, it gets confused for pushing or overworking or the masculine energy. And I want to discount that because that's not at all what action means. And I think action is 
essential if you want to be able to create those epic results in your business this year, any time of the year, next year. Yes, clarity, mindset, strategy, we need to have those. Those are core components to business, but it is the action that drives all of that forward that ends up generating your results. And you need behind that action, you absolutely need that clarity, mindset, strategy. We're not just taking any old action. We wanna take aligned action. I think aligned is a very confusing word in our online space and I think I'm hesitant to use the word aligned. It's not one of the kinds of actions we're gonna talk about today, though I'm all about aligned action and focus action. The reason I'm hesitant to use the word aligned is kind of as a side note here is I think sometimes when we use a word like aligned with action, our brain that is a sneaky little fucker likes to lie to us and tell us something that doesn't feel good or feels uncomfortable isn't aligned so that you have an excuse not to show up and take action, which is why I'm hesitant to use that word. However, aligned action is where it's at. But I do think that's something just to be mindful of because when it comes to taking action, action is where, I mean, that's when contrary action is how you shift mindset patterns. That's also not what we're talking about today, but just so you can see, like action is really where the results come from. That's where we shift mindset patterns. That's where you put your strategy into action to get results. So it absolutely needs to be aligned, but because that's where you actually have to show up, go all in, put some skin in the game. That's also when the brain wants to kick up. This is why your mindset is such an important component. This is when the brain wants to kick up resistance. This is when the brain wants to tell you, actually, this is uncomfortable. Let's just go watch Netflix instead. Actually, I don't know that I wanna do this so much and it'll start to feed you lies because that is what the brain does. That is what the brain is designed to do if you're not doing your mindset work or you know, you're not having that awareness. So what I would offer as we're talking through this, but particularly this year as we're talking about things like alignment, which I think is a word thrown around in our space, to be mindful of the difference between alignment and your brain lying to you saying something's not in alignment so that you get an excuse to hide. Um, hey Gemma, nice to see you. It's funny, sometimes it tells me who's on, sometimes it doesn't. Anyone else feel free to say hi. Y'all missed my, my news because you just showed up, so I'll share my news again at the end of, um, are live and I'll share my other announcements. I do have another announcement that is business related. Okay, so let's talk about the first type of action. So the three actions we're gonna dive into today, I took a look at my last few years in business and I was trying to get under the hood of my results. I've shared with you all very transparently, I'm really proud of the results I've had in my business and how much we've grown. I also took a look at what is going into my client results because it's one thing for me to say this is what's worked for me. I'm really taking a look at what am I supporting my clients with? What is helping my clients get? results in their business. My clients are incredible. They do incredible work. And it's really interesting just to see one of the gifts I can give to all of you is I see the behind the scenes of so many businesses because I focus only on one-on-one -on -one work and I'm just getting to see what creates success all day, every day. So three types of actions I have seen across the board. There are obviously more types of action, but these are the three that I find are really what help you to get those unapologetic results in your business. Um, hey Janelle, Okay, so the first one here is smart micro actions. I'm gonna explain what I mean here. I am kind of ex like, I probably have talked about this in different ways, but I wanna break this down more clearly on today's live stream. Smart micro actions. So I'm sure you've heard me talk about the importance of taking small action, small actions and how small actions, it's, you know, it's never one big thing that creates success. It's sort of like if you've ever had one cheat meal that doesn't make you gain weight. Or if you've dieted for one day and crash dieted, that doesn't give you lasting weight loss. It's the same in business. One thing is rarely what creates sustainable profitability and success in business. It tends to be the result of small, smart, or smart micro actions taken over time that add up and compound to results. And I wanna really break down what I mean by the smart micro action piece here because I have a very specific piece I want to share. But just first on the compounding, I know I've shared this, but I'm going to share it again because I have just seen this so much in my business this year, how when you take these smart, my, smart micro actions and you take them consistently, how they literally compound and bring in results in your business. And this is what actually makes business feel easy. It's really funny because we're talking about taking action and action feels like it's a verb or a word that is the opposite of ease and flow. But when you're taking those smart micro actions, this is actually what creates ease. I cannot tell you this year 
well, last year, I guess, we're in, we're in the new year now, last year, how it felt like, and I'm not saying this is not to be obnoxious, but how it felt like clients just came from nowhere because of the smart micro actions I took the year before or the year before. I've been in business long enough now and I've been taking smart micro actions for so long and they've compounded so much where I built relationships and put out work that has compounded on one another, it makes business feel so incredibly easy. The same thing with putting out content. I put out a fuck ton of content. I put out a lot of things. I serve a lot of clients. I think I serve probably more, more clients than you all assume. I serve a lot of people behind the scenes and I serve them very well. The reason I'm able to do that and the reason it feels so easy, aside from my amazing team that supports me, which is a big part of it, but part of it is because of these smart micro actions, when you take these consistently, they really add up and create ease in your business and they start to stack and make things feel easier and easier and easier. And they also remove a lot of the challenges and problems that trip business owners up. So that's the part I want to explain specifically around this smart part of the micro action. Janelle says, yes, small continuous steps, a thousand percent. It sounds so unsexy and I know that y'all, so please hang with me because I really, like I'm so fired up about these actions and I know sometimes it's like we just want the sexy, like secret to success and this is not the sexiest thing to hear, but it's the truth and it works and the results are unapologetically sexy. It's just most people want to look for that one big thing instead of showing up for the small micros, small like micro actions, I can't get the words out of my mouth, the small micro actions, the small, the smart micro actions, that's what I'm trying to say. So what I mean by the smart piece of this is really looking at these micro actions and making smart choices. What I think these micro actions come down to is the smart choices that go into making them happen and where I think so much of business success is created and where so much of business success is like the potential is there, but people don't get to reach their potential is by not making these smart micro actions because they're not making smart choices. So what I mean by smart choices, everyone here is smart. That is not what I mean. This is not about like your level of IQ, but what I find throughout any given day, when there is something you want to create in your future, in this case, if you're here, I'm guessing it is business success. I'm guessing you want to make more money doing what you love. You want to do it your way. You're an entrepreneur. If we were in another group, maybe in your future, you want a you know happy, healthy relationship or to feel wonderful in your body, whatever those results might be that are off in the future that you don't have currently. It is the result of making smart choices and then taking those micro actions to get there. And any given day, we are presented with myriad choices. And the people that I see choose the smart choice, which usually means delaying instant gratification so that they can have the long-term gains, are the people that I see get the epic results. But what I see happens for most people is our brain that we all have, because we're human, in the moment, smart choices tend to be the same choices that don't feel super good, that feel a little uncomfortable. The online space is saying, do what feels good, do what feels easy, which I'm all about. I'm gonna explain the difference between those. Um, hey, Courtney. And what I see happens for most people is because they are human and because the brain is wired for pleasure, it's wired to seek pleasure, avoid pain, it's also wired to conserve calories, meaning it's always going to choose that habit or pattern on that's kind of on loop, the easy solution that your brain already has, unless you're creating awareness and consciously choosing something different. Most people, unless they're consciously making an effort to make smart choices for these micro actions, choose the action that really gives them instant gratification that takes them further away from what they want in the future and has them repeat the results they already have. I'm gonna explain that more, but let me know if that's making sense so far. So smart choices, let me give you some examples because this, this sounds so, so, so unsexy, but when I look at my first year in business, I joke sometimes about how I was on the struggle bus and I drove at full speed ahead my first year in business. I did, but I'm also so proud of my first year in business because I also did, I think, some really epic things. It just didn't look like it does now. And I really made smart choices that did not give me immediate gratification, but that absolutely gave me these long-term gains. They weren't comfortable in the moment at all, like at all, at all, at all. I don't even think they were easy in the moment, but now my business feels fucking easy and amazing because of those past smart micro choices. And these were things like, and when I say micro choices or my, micro actions and these smart choices, 
we're talking like little tiny things and it's these little it's the um there's like the thing that popped in my head you guys know the old uh children's story the princess and the pea and how like that one little pea screws up her sleep in the mattresses one small micro action one smart choice over and over again again these things compound it's like most people don't back to the original example most people don't gain weight because of one meal they ate it's that extra handful of chips every day over COVID for a year where suddenly they have the COVID, what are we calling it? Like the COVID-15 or whatever. Um, same same concept here in reverse. So let me give you some examples here. So I'm not being so obtuse. Smart choices for micro actions looks like things like say no to a second glass of wine. I know this sounds so small. That's why I'm saying smart micro choices um, to have those micro actions. Say no to a second glass of wine so I can wake up two hours earlier before my day job to serve clients or to create a piece of content. I, um, again, say no, again, not saying everyone has to like make these sacrifices, but just to give some examples, say no to things like going out with friends and buying new clothes. I didn't, in my first year in business, I didn't buy new clothes and I didn't go out with friends. I mean, I did, but not a ton, so that I could invest in coaching and my business. Smart choices, micro actions, right? Like in the moment, if I went out with friends and like, or saw like a new shirt, like media gratification, buy the shirt, you deserve it, life is short, have a great money mindset. But I was choosing, um, I think I've shared this before, but it's like you can be rich now or be rich wealthy later. It's like I could be a little uncomfortable now to be wildly comfortable and successful later. These were smart choices in the moment for those micro actions. I see this with like bringing it back more to business. These are just like personal choices, but they absolutely impact business. Smart choices in your business, there are things like I'm gonna use the waking up one. I'm not saying everyone has to wake up early or like work a ton in their business. I have plenty of clients who have kids and don't have lots of hours for clients. We're not talking about burning out. We're not talking about working more than you need to. That is not the conversation here. But we are talking about smart choices. Like in this moment, I don't feel like creating content or I don't feel like sending that follow-up email. What would feel better is to go watch Netflix for an hour and making the smart choice that's aligned with the future goal and taking that micro action of writing the follow-up email or writing the piece of content or showing up to post the piece of content. Micro actions, any of those would take five minutes, right? But it's the smart choice to choose the action, the micro action that is aligned with your future goals. So I, I, if I look back at my business, if I look at my clients and any one of my clients, like as they're getting new results, if we look back, it's because they keep, they keep choosing let me delay instant gratification. Let me delay that grat gratification. Again, this does not mean you can't enjoy your work or it doesn't feel good. That's not what we're talking about. But it's all about, can I look to what gratification do I want in the future? What is that future success I want to create? And what's the smart choice now that might not be as comfortable right now that I can make so I can take that micro action to help get me there? And this is generally done from a very neutral place. Um, Janelle says, so true. Let me know, hey Stephanie. Um, nice to see you, I've seen some of these comments here. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I should say ladies, I think there's more ladies here today, but let me know if y'all have any questions, reflections, throw them at me. Um, I am currently reading a book called It Takes What It Takes. It's a really, um, it's a top sports coach who's, who coaches like football teams and basketball teams around their mind for creating results. It's a lot about neutrality, which I believe is really relevant to business. I talk a lot about this in terms of creating business success. And what I appreciate, there's a lot in the book that I don't just, that I don't necessarily agree with. I think it's a little on the, the pushing masculine heavy side in terms of like, almost where I can get into burnout energy, but there's a lot there in terms of mindset that I really appreciate. And what he talks about, what I think is so relevant to what we're talking about here with these smart micro actions, he talks about this concept with, when you look at top pro athletes, the top football players, the top basketball players, and athletes who have careers that span decades, which for a pro athlete, that's usually unheard of because of you know, just how taxing that is on the body and what the level they're competing at. There's so many factors that go into that. And when you look at those athletes, what he talks about is they all make smart choices and they all, essentially in the name of the title of the book, they do, it, it takes what it takes. And they're not trying to convince themselves that they can make stupid 
I, I don't like the word smart and stupid, but they can make poor choices, choices that don't serve them and still get those epic results they want. They're very clear that it takes what it takes. And so they consciously make those smart choices so they can have what they really truly want, what actually feels good to them. Instead of the immediate gratification, which I think so often when we're tapped into immediate gratification, that's more that that buffering, it's more for our ego versus what we like truly want from our life and our full potential. And that for athletes, a lot of times that will look like things like going to an extra practice when everyone else wants to go to the club after a game and looking at these things where it's like, those are smart choices and micro actions that when you're looking at top athletes, top pro athletes that separate those pro athletes that have a year or two career to those pro athletes that have decade long careers and their body stays intact. So again, I am not like, please, please hear me. I am not saying to anyone in 2021, the way you get results is by pushing and burning out and you need to do all the things and it takes what it takes. I'm so not that, um, I don't come from that belief structure. I very much believe in energy and it gets to be easy and you get to tap into alignment and what feels good for you and finding your way of doing things. And I absolutely believe with all of that being said, coming from that energy and space, making smart choices and taking those smart micro actions, those actions absolutely add up over time and compound to create so much ease and epic success in your business. And the beautiful thing is those smart micro actions, they're usually so much easier than the like big crazy things anyone thinks they need to do to create success in their business. It's just being willing in any given moment to keep making those smart choices to take those smart micro actions and being aware of that, that I think is where some of the challenge can come up again, because of being human and just how the brain is designed, which is why I think coaching is just such a powerful thing. Um, and we have questions and we'll go into action type number two. Also, oh, hi, because I see new faces on here. I'm so happy to have you all here and to be back. Happy New Year. It makes me so happy when I get to hang with y'all. And I feel like I need to re-announce my, my first announcement because now there's more of you on here, but I will save it till the end. Um, I've just got fun things to share with y'all. Okay, let's see. Was there anything else with this that I wanted to share? I think I already shared this, but I the, the main thing here I like just want to like put a button on is I'm really not saying this is like you need to struggle or you need to deprive yourself or that this is like you need to make sacrifices. That's not, that's not the mindset we're coming from at all. It's can we make smart choices for those micro actions, which sometimes mean be, means being uncomfortable or delaying gratification to get what you truly, really want. Um, hey Steph, nice to have you. Kelly says, love this. I'm currently listening to Automatic habits and he talks about a very similar philosophy take small actions from the place of who you want to be versus who you are right now i haven't read that book yet but I, it's on my list so um and also nice to see you kelly happy new year i love hearing that because that's it's exactly it is exactly that philosophy and thank you because you're reminding me of the piece that i wanted to put a button on it's when we're taking these thank you so much kelly when we're taking these um smart micro actions what I want to remind everyone here, you've just set New Year's intentions and goals and everything you want to create this year. When you can take a moment to pause, get to neutral, it's that neutrality that I'm obsessed with. It takes what it takes, talks about, I'm sure a ton of books talk about, talk about this, my coach talks about this, but if you can, from a neutral place, really think about what is the future I'm stepping into? What are those goals I want to create? What, what is it that I want for my business? What is that I like to think, for me, I think of what's next level Kim. Um, what is the smart choice and the smart micro action that gets me there? So then when I'm confronted with two things, buy clothes now or save my money so I can invest in coaching. Um, this is this was a smart, here's like, you guys wanna hear like first year in business, I have picked up an extra job. Like I stayed in my nine to five and worked even when I was making money so that I could bring in enough cash flow to keep investing in my business so I never put pressure on the business. To me, that was a smart choice and micro action that I had to recommit to every day. And I had to like remind myself and I had to recommit to things like, okay, making the, the micro action here to carve out a half an hour in the morning or carve out a half an hour in the evening when I could watch TV. I don't think I watched any TV my first year in business, y'all. Um, I make it sound like I was like such a martyr and that is not, again, what I'm sharing. But just to give some context, it like I think these are the things that, um, it's the manifestation babe. She's the one who says you can be, ask yourself, do you wanna be rich now or wealthy later? And I think it's the same thing. Like, do you wanna be, 
like having your like quick hit of dopamine now or do you want all the results later that come from that small delayed gratification and if you love your work and you love what you do i will tell you i fucking love my work so it's not like any of that's ever a sacrifice it's just when you have two options brain tends to want the easier sounding option like watching netflix or i don't know going out and drinking. Um, but it, I think when you love your work and it's in alignment, it's never going to feel like that horrible trade-off. It's just about making that choice in the moment. Okay, um, I've read that one. Stephanie says it's such a good book. Okay, I gotta add this to my list, y'all. I, I have not read it yet. I've heard all of that and haven't read it yet. Okay, I'm hitting you over the head with this one. You all get it. So the second type of action that I think is essential and I think creates epic unapologetic results in your business is all in committed action. So again, I think this is, I just see this so often in clients when they first come to me and they're first working with me, if they're showing up, but they're not getting the results they want, they're taking action and they're not getting the results they want, we actually peel back the layers. Oftentimes it's because they're not all in and committed to their action. They're sort of from that mindset of, I'm just gonna test this and see if it works out. It's sort of that like one toe in, one foot in one foot out mentality do you all know what i'm talking about and it's such a shift in the energy and mindset that fuels your action when you are all in and committed to working something until it works i know i have probably said this eight thousand times to you all and i'm going to say it again because it's just that important such a different type of action when you're coming from that place versus when you're coming from the mindset of like well I don't know, we'll see if this works, or let me just test this out, or oh, I like, I don't really, like I just, oh, maybe I'll do this, like maybe this will work. And it completely changes the results you get on the back end. If you believe in energy manifesting anything on the woo side, it changes quite literally what you're putting out and what you're going to manifest back. But if you believe in the practical, like even if you don't believe in the energetics of that, if you believe in the practical side of things, when you're not all in, and when you're not all in and committed to taking action, this is when I see people start and stop strategy all the time. And this is when I have, I love all my clients. So this is like, sometimes I have clients come to me and they've been trying at business for so long and they're so frustrated and they feel like they've been working so hard. But when we take a look at what's been going on, they've been starting and stopping different strategies for years and they've never been all in and committed with the strategy they're taking action behind. And so nothing's ever had enough time to play full out and really give them that re their results or they're showing up, but they're not all in mentally, like mindset wise with what they're doing. And so they're subconsciously putting up blocks and getting in their own way when results are coming in. I'll give you some examples around what I mean by that, but let me know if this is making sense or if you have any questions and I will give examples. Um, this, to me is it's such a line in the sand. I can look at my, I've always been all in on my business, but I can look when I went all in on my strategy and the type of action I took and just what a shift that made for me in results and how much easier it makes everything. Because when you're all in and committed to your action, you're showing up with that kind of action, you also minimize decision fatigue. There's no longer all these question marks about like, should I do this thing? Or like, is this gonna work? When you're all in and committed and taking action from that space, you've decided this is working. You've decided you're going to work something until it works. So there's no question mark left. It's not like, well, will this work? It's this will work. And so I'm going to show up until it does work. And that changes all the options for you because you're no longer than searching for 400 downloads and freebies on a different thing you could try out because maybe the thing you're doing isn't really the way you should build your business. And everyone know what I'm talking about here. Um, before I'll give some examples. Before I go into examples, I'm sure I've shared this as well. But I think something really helpful to remember when it comes to strategy and business, kind of the general number that gets thrown around in the online space is that it takes an average of 90 days at minimum for a strategy to start bringing in results and really bringing in data. Doesn't mean things can't happen sooner. I've absolutely had clients who are unicorns who get faster results. But in general, when we're building a new strategy, 90 days minimum to start seeing results. And that's minimum if you're all in and committed to that strategy and taking action all in on that strategy. Many strategies take longer. If you were to 
go hire someone for Facebook ads right now or go hire a marketing strategist and pay them large sums of money, this is what they would tell you. And so it's the same thing that's true for any strategy you're playing. Um, and so what I think, like if you wanna get epic results, unapologetic results, you do yourself so many favors if you decide and commit to what you're doing and that action, if you go in with that all in committed action. Um, let's see, Stephanie says, how do I know if I'm all in or not? Oh, I think you answered it, thanks. Let me know, Stephanie, if you still have a question if you still have a question about that. I think overall, if you're not sure if you're all in on something, to me, and I say this with love, Stephanie, but to me that makes me wonder what the commitment level is. I feel like when we're all in and committed, you, like you've made a commitment so you know you're all in. If you have to ask, there's a question mark. Okay, this is a perfect example. Um, and I get to reshare my announcement. So what you all missed at the beginning that I shared, I have one more announcement business related that I'll share at the end of the live stream. But what I shared at the beginning is I got engaged to my boyfriend over the holidays and I don't share things like this publicly, but I wanna share with all of you because I share pretty much everything with all of you. So we got engaged over the holidays. So when you, when you get engaged, when you get married, when you get married, like that is a commitment where you're saying I am going all in. There's not like a question mark. We're not like, well, let's just see if this still kind of works out. Uh, like maybe like if it doesn't work out in a couple months, it's cool, I'll just move out. Or like, let's just like give it a go. Or like, well, we could just like see if we still like each other in six months. When you get engaged and you get married, it's like, no, I'm going all in. I am committed to this. I am taking action in this relationship, in my business, in this strategy, like I mean it. And I have decided ahead of time that I'm all in committed and it's working. You don't go into an engagement or marriage like, well, I'm like gonna see if this works out and then I'll decide if I'm committed, right? No one does that, I hope no one does that. You decide ahead of time, I'm committed, I am all in, this is working. And if there's a problem or there's something that's not working, I'm going to lean in further and work it until it works because I have committed to this person. I have committed to this, right? Same, same in business. So same, same with your strategy, with your business. If you're all in and committed and you're taking action from that place, if there's a problem that comes up, if there's something that feels hard, if there's something that feels challenging, the question becomes, what's the problem to solve? What do I need to adjust? Is it my mindset? Is, like, is there something we need to tweak? How do I run at, how do I like resolve this? How do I lean into this even more and make this work for me? It's not, this must be evidence that it's not working. I'm out and I'm gonna find something new. And I think that's the big difference. And that changes the way you show up and take action just like it would completely change the way I show up and take action in my relationship if I wasn't all in and committed. Does that make sense, y'all? Um, and let's see, uh, Courtney says, yay. Steph says, congrats. Nala as the flower girl, Nala as the flower girl. We're gonna have a very, very small, like five person wedding. My, I told everyone this, my now fiance, I get to say fiance. My fiance has a 10 year old son now who I've known since he was four. So we'll probably have him as the ring bearer with like all five of us. Um, Stephanie says, yay. Thank you all for sharing with me. It's very, very exciting. I shared this with everyone in the beginning. Um, I'm not into engagement rings. I come from a very non-traditional family, but he did, he did good and got me a very non-traditional ring just being resized and I'll share it with all of you next week. It's vintage and it's pretty and all the fun stuff. So thank you all for sharing that with me. And to go back to why I brought it up again, um, to go back to all in committed action, that's the difference. So Stephanie, let me know if that makes, um, I know we have two Stephanies on, Stephanie Walton, I should say. Let me know if that makes sense, that difference between all in committed action versus that kind of more testing, I'll wait and see. I'm showing up and taking action, but I'm not all in and committed. I think the relationship example probably is the easiest way to describe that. The reason this is so important, I'm just looking at the time. I'm so long-winded, y'all. I'm gonna have one example here and then I'll share the other type of action. So the reason this is so important, aside the fact that strategy takes, you know, however long to play out, what I, few things that happen. When you're not all in and all in and committed with the action you're taking, what is happening is you have a big question mark in your brain that says, I don't know if this is gonna work out. I don't know if this is for me. I'm kind of looking to see if there's other options. Just like if you're not all in in your relationship and you're sort of like, maybe there's someone better out there. Let me just see. And subconsciously, your brain is kind of looking for other options. 
and I know I've shared this, but 99 to 90, 95 to 99% of all of your conscious action, so the action piece we're talking about, gets its start in your subconscious brain. If your subconscious or, or your conscious brain is tuned to the dial of, let me see what other options are out there. I don't know if this is gonna work, so let me just like hedge my bets, let me see what else might happen. It's literally directly affecting the way in which you're showing up and taking action. Um, this is how your brain is wired. And what will happen is, A, you're not gonna be as focused on what you're doing. You're gonna be kind of like focus on like, this is when we get into like crazy comparisonitis and it's like, this person's doing that strategy, this person's doing that, I should, because you're not committed and all in on yours. The same with when you're not all committed, all in and committed on your relationship. It's like, you just see all the other options when you're all in and, all in and committed, it's like no one else in the world exists. I mean, if the relationship example lands there. Um, so that focus comes into play. But when you're also in that space of like, I don't know if this is gonna work, I don't know if I really want this, I don't know, blah, 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 and we're in that space, subconsciously, we also start sabotaging results. And this is when you know clients come to me, it's like they're booking calls, but they're pushing away clients. They're sabotaging the sales call, or they're sabotaging, I edit a lot of my clients' content and copy, my clients will tell you. Um, I'm almost annoying sometimes where I'm like, stop apologizing in your copies. Stop holding back or stop sub, like basically pushing people away and they don't even realize they're doing it. Like human, but this is just like how the brain will get in your own way, even if you're showing up and taking action. If you're not coming from that all in committed place, it's like there's just so many ways the brain wants to come in and sabotage you because what I know to be true and how your brain works is it does not give you what you consciously say you want. It gives you what you actually want. I think that's a Carolyn Elliott quote. Carolyn Elliott quote. So if what you actually want is like, eh, I don't really know if this is going to work and I want to stay like safe and cozy over here, your brain is just going to create situations to match that, which is going to affect the way you show up and take action and those results you're bringing in into your business. So promise, 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 this makes such a big difference. This was one of those ones when I look at my business from like, when I was like doing okay and like making consistent um, income, but like when I started making like the bigger leaps, a big piece of it was like looking at like just being all in and committed in a, I've always been committed, but just like all in and like sold on what I was doing in such a different way and that energy behind it. Let me know if that makes sense. All right, last one, I need a sip of water because my throat is drying the heat and then we'll talk about the last type of action. Let me know if this is helpful for you all. I love this stuff. I could talk about this for like days. I have like 18 other kinds of action, but I also wanna make sure I'm sharing with you all what is helpful, beneficial to you. So let me know if this is beneficial. If there's other stuff you wanna hear about, um, I've got all sorts of live schedule, but we can always put in other topics for you as well. I'm showing up for you. Okay, the last type of action. So this is not brand new news, but it is important because I think this is still not happening very much in our online space, so it is worth talking about. And that is consistent action. This is the last type of action today I wanna to talk about in terms of the type of action that will bring you epic results. And this goes back to when we talk about those smart micro actions, that consistency piece we talked about, consistent actions. Here's the thing with consistency, you all. Consistency is everything when it comes to the money in your business. Um, I forget who says this, it might be my coach, but uh, who says your money in your business is about as consistent as you are. Consistent action, even if your mindset sucks and even if your strategy sucks, if you're consistently showing up and taking action, you're gonna end up, just by the sheer fact of consistently taking action, you're going to get results. If you add in the rocket fuel of having clarity on your version of success and your message and your mission and adding in a CEO mindset and you know not getting in your own way and really coming from that forward thinking place and you add in a simple strategy that works for you and you're taking consistent action, you will be unstoppable in business. And then if you layer on top of that, that you're all in and committed and you're making those smart choices and taking those smart micro actions, you, it's inevitable that you win. It is inevitable that you get results in your business. And I know that sounds overly simple and I know how frustrating that can almost sound when you feel like you're doing some of these pieces and maybe you're not getting the results you want. I, pr I promise you, because I've experienced this and I have been on both sides. I have like been on driving struggle bus full speed ahead and feeling just so blessed and lucky for 
the income I'm making and the clients I get to work with. So like, I feel you, I've been on both sides of that. I've also seen this in my clients. I've helped clients on both sides and I've helped clients get results that are far bigger than mine. And the consistent action piece, and I know like this is not new news, but it is, there is not a single client of mine who has scaled to a million dollars or to multiple six figures who is not consistently taking action and does not take that seriously, period. Not a single one. It's, and that's not an accident. There's, it's, there's a reason everyone talks about this. It's also kind of like the least sexy one of these and the thing no one wants to hear because consistent action means you gotta be consistent. And it goes back to that first one. It means you gotta make those smart choices to take those micro actions. And it means oftentimes that, oh, I gotta like keep, keep showing up, keep doing this thing and find a way to love the journey because I'm probably, even if I'm getting immediate results, to sustain those immediate results, if I wanna keep getting them, I gotta keep showing up consistently. And I think that can be a little bit of, it's like the, I think it's a blessing because it's like, it gets to be that simple. And if you love what you do, why wouldn't you wanna take consistent action? But I think for like, when you're feeling like it's feeling like a, like climb uphill through mud, I think it can feel like, wait, you're saying I have to consistently climb through mud uphill? Or when you feel like you don't love what you do, I think this part can feel really frustrating. So this is why finding a strategy that you like and finding actions that work for you is so important. But this piece right here, game changer. This is also the piece, I think the type of action where mindset comes to play, well, I mean, mindset comes into play into all of them always. But I find if you're not showing up consistently, it's something I always say to my clients, no one is lazy. No one here is lazy. No one here is not capable of showing up consistently. So if you're not showing up consistently, 99 out of 100 times, um, that's a total made up stat by the way, but a lot of the time, that means there's something going on mindset wise that's creating resistance that's causing you to not show up consistently. And I would invite you if you feel like, okay, I hear you Kim and I hear everyone else on the internet screaming consistency, at least I think everyone else screams this because I think it's so important, so that's what I tend to notice. But I have a really hard time with this. I would invite you to check in and look a little bit and unpack, like, what is it about showing up consistently? Like, what's coming up for me around that? What's the story I have around that? What do I attach to taking this kind of action? Is there something I'm scared of? Is there something on the other side of consistent action? I don't like it. Do I attach pain to this? Maybe I have something that is out of alignment in terms of what I'm showing up for. Maybe I don't have clarity around the type of action I need to take, so it's really hard to take that consistent action. Maybe I'm stuck in decision fatigue and I need some more of that clarity. But I would invite you to unpack, whether you journal or talk to your coach or talk to a friend, but really unpack what's coming up for you there and with any of these actions, because I promise, promise, promise you, like no one is incapable of taking action. No one is lazy, but everyone here is human and everyone has a human brain. And our human brain is super basic and it wants to keep you safe and protect you. It wants to keep you in survival mode. It's got fears. Number one job of it is survival. So if there's, you know, if you have a fear that on the other side of consistent action means you're never gonna have a life or you're gonna make so much money, everyone will hate you. Brain's gonna say, must stay safe. Let's not take consistent action because that's gonna have all these bad things happen. So you're human, you have a human brain. It's also, again, wired to avoid pain, seek pleasure. And, I, and it's wired to conserve calories, meaning to find the patterns you already have and to find the shortcuts in your brain. And I share this so that you can just normalize any resistance around any types of action that we've talked about that come up for you and see if I have resistance around this, if I have a challenge point with one of these, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing broken. There's nothing you need to fix. Most likely there's just something to take a look at so that you can shift it. And when you create awareness around it, that is, I'd say 90% of the game for making a shift mindset wise, which is going to directly impact and affect the type of action you're taking. But it does not mean, well, you're not cut out to be an entrepreneur or you don't have the, someone said that one of my clients said this to me the other day and it broke my heart. I don't know who is teaching this online, but there's like no such thing as an entrepreneur gene or like only certain types of people are meant to be business owners. That is such a bunch of BS y'all. So if anyone is like hearing that, please put your earmuffs on. That's just not a thing at all. Like it's just not a thing, period. There is a thing as being human and having a human experience and having trauma with a capital T or lowercase t and different things that come up that can create barriers that make it harder to take action. Any of the types of action we're 
talking about, they make it harder to run at what you want. And that's why action doesn't stand alone in my coaching framework. And we always want to bring in the clarity mindset and strategy piece. So really, really important to say as we're closing out this topic, if you find any of these types of action challenging, that's okay. And this is an opportunity. It's a brand new slate, a brand new year. Best thing about being human, like those are all our human qualities. Best, best thing about being humans, there is so much research on our brains. Our brains are malleable. You can rewire your brain. I sure as hell have rewired my brain. Y'all, if you could like have taken a brain scan on Kim circa seven years ago compared to Kim now, completely different brains. Our brains are malleable. You can change patterns. You can change habits. None of anything that was in happened in 2020 literally is behind you. You can't change it, but none of those habits or patterns are set in stone and you literally have the power to decide and change. And that includes the type of action you're taking in your business and the type of results you're getting and the powerful, magical, wonderful thing about taking action, especially when you're taking action that is really focused on what is that future result I want? What is that future me I'm stepping into? What are those, like I'm playing the long game, even though I know I can get immediate results, it just speeds up the results for you and it makes everything so much easier. All right, I see a comment here. Um, Daniela says, I wasn't showing up on social media no matter how many times I wrote it down on my planner, it wasn't getting done. Um, I had such a big fear of social media which prevented me from actually doing it. Thank you so much for sharing that transparently. I think that's such a beautiful example of what we're talking about. You knew the action you needed to take. You're writing it down in your planner. You know what I mean? Like I, I like to joke, like there's, like there's no special planning system out there that's going to make you take action and get results if there's something that's preventing you from actually doing it. If you have a big fear of social media, I don't know what your fear was, Danielle, and you don't have to share. I'll use myself as an example. Many of you know, I don't know if you know this, but my, um, I was terrified of posting on social media. So before I started my business, I had never posted on social media. I posted once when I moved from LA to New York to sell my furniture and that was it. I had so much fear and so much internal baggage for a lack of a better way to say it around showing up online and taking up space and being visible, which is why I talk so much about taking up space and hiding in plain sight and why I preach around this because I know what can come up around it. And I also know how powerful it is when you shift that and show up unapologetically. So I love that you shared this. And I think that's a beautiful example of if you're feeling, if you're having a hard time, you know, you, you know what you need to do, you know what the type of action you need to take, you're writing, this is me writing it. You're writing it down in a planner and you're still having a hard time following through. It's not because you don't like, there's something else going on. There's usually a fear. There's usually like, there's something else to unpack there. And when you can unpack that, that's what allows like whoosh, like, allows you to move through it and process that so you can actually start showing up and taking the kind of action we're talking about. I really appreciate you for sharing that. Anyone else wanna share a reflection with me? If not, I will wrap this in a bow and I'll share my last announcement with y'all. So to put this in a, tie this in a bow, action is really, it is that driver that is going to take your clarity, mindset, and strategy that's what takes it into action, puts it into action. That is the catalyst for bringing in the results in your business. If we omit this piece from our new year's resolutions and goals and intentions, and we just stay in the planning phase and we just stay in the clarity and journaling phase and the ideation phase or the mindset work phase or even the strategizing phase and we forget to include that action piece, it's very hard to move any of that beautiful ideation into manifest it into results. And that action piece, whether you are a practical person or you are a woo person who believes in more of the energy side of things, that action piece is the driver that helps you bring in results, bring in data. So, so, so crucial. And we went over those three types of actions you need so you can run a 2021 unapologetically. Unapologetic is my word for the year. You also, I'm just gonna use it as much as I possibly can. So you can run unapologetically at 2021 to bring in those results you want, to create that version of success you want. And those were those smart micro actions, again, that are fueled by smart choices for you that are aligned to the future results you want in your business, your future version of yourself. They were the all in committed action and it was that consistent action. So I hope that was helpful for you. And then I'll share my new announcement. So I have been sitting on this. I've been Excited to share this with you. I am launching a podcast this month. I have been waiting to, I had a podcast when I first started my business. I've been waiting to launch 
another one, I was waiting for the right idea. I know I could repurpose live streams and things like that for a podcast, but I need people do that. And I think that's a great vehicle for sharing content. I wanted to do something different if I was creating something new. So I am going to be launching at the end of this month. It is called One Question, Unapologetic Questions for Unapologetic Results. What we are going to do is explore one question each episode and really unpack the mindset behind it and the thinking behind it and really go into why that question will help you generate the answers and pull out the answers inside of you to create the results you want. Something I believe to be true that I have experienced from creating my own multi six figure business from seeing so many clients create success is that your success is not found in more information and taking nothing wrong with courses, but like in just taking more courses and downloading more freebies and in consuming more. Every one of my clients who creates epic success, it comes from them tapping into the magic inside of them, tapping into the answers inside of them, tapping into and trusting what's already inside of them. And one of the things I think is so powerful and transformative about coaching is coaching is all about asking better questions, asking the right questions to pull out someone's magic, to hold space, to hold a container for someone to pull out and to find their magic, their answers, so they can run at those their own personal answers to get those results they want. If you look at any business that you look up to, whether it's in the online space or you look at something like Nike or you know any you know really big corporation, or if you look at someone, I know I've done um, a training on question all the rules for business success, and I talk about someone. You know, if you look at the um, Steve Jobs of the world, none of those entrepreneurs or business owners are creating this their success because they're following someone else's blueprint or someone else's formula. They're creating the formulas other people are looking at. But our marketing in our online space, and I'm a little bit on a soapbox, but I feel really, really strongly about this. I feel like our online space is such a beautiful place and we are so lucky to have it. And I think marketing is doing its job, but it is also spreading the message that you are missing something, there is a secret, you don't know enough, you like need more information or you're never gonna be able to have the success you want. Maybe you're not cut out to be an entrepreneur. All of this noise, is being put into marketing because marketing is designed to speak to pain points and speak to what you want. And so it's hitting on people's pain points and it's reinforcing this story and insecurity in people and it's just not true. It is not true, it is not true. So I wanna be a stand for that. I'm doing something different instead of having a podcast where we're just gonna, you know, share normal ideas. We're going to look at questions, explore a question each week so we can really use that as a lens to explore business topics. We will still be talking about how do you build, grow, and scale a business that you love, that is profitable. We'll still be talking about making more money doing what you love and doing it on your terms, but we're going to explore one question each episode, unapologetic questions for unapologetic results. And I will also bring on guest experts and we'll explore a question that is either led to their success or question they're pondering. I'm excited about this. I hope you are as excited as me. I will have a launch team. So we will be launching tentatively January 25th, pending, you know, Apple, however we upload things. Um, next week, I'll start promoting the podcast launch team. I would love to have you if you feel called to join. It's free. Um, all it means is if you feel called to, you can share on your social media or promote the podcast and I will be giving away tons of free prizes and swag. You can even enjoy uh, what are one of the things we have a 90 minute free intensive in there. I'm giving away some of my, um, do it yourself courses. So we'll be giving away lots of freebies and prizes for anyone who does want to sign up for that and be a part of the launch team. I also just love on you a whole lot and appreciate you because I really want to share this message more with the world. So that is my fun announcement. I'm really excited about it. And next week I'll start putting some things in the group. So if you want to join the launch team, you can. Um, Courtney says, ooh, sounds good, congrats. This sounds so up your alley. Thank you, Courtney, I appreciate that. Um, yes, you know, I get I get on my, my soapbox about these things. So I'm very, very excited to share this with you all. Kelly says, yay, I still remember asking you to start one when we were working together. Um, I forgot that you said that. I, I love you. Yes, you probably you probably did. It has been a long time coming. I will. So this is a great thing for us to close on. Um, Kelly, you probably know this, but the reason I haven't started a podcast sooner, aside from the last few months, I was marinating on. Uh, I was I was waiting for a divine download. I was waiting for the right idea for something for the podcast. But I'm such a big believer in focus in our business and focusing and kind of layering strategy and focusing on one thing and doing one thing well before we add something new on. I had a podcast my first year in business 
which is where I learned this lesson to focus on one thing at a time and layer things on because I was literally doing all the things. And since then I've committed to trying to add one, two things max per year and layer them into my strategy. And so we've layered some you know, other things on. Like last year I layered on the free course that I gave to all of you, the sales course, which was a fair amount of work and promotion. Um, you know, we've layered different things like that in. So this year feels like we're at a place where it's like, I, I can layer something new in and I have the team to support, support me behind the scenes with some of the other things we've already got running easily. So it's easy for me to layer this in and really focus it instead of feeling like I'm stretching myself thin or not giving clients the attention they need. So um, that is a good button for us to end on and why I've waited for um, because I've wanted to have a podcast for, for a while, but why I've waited on that. All right, let me know if you have any questions. If you're watching the replay, reflections, questions, any of the things, always here for it. If there's anything you want me to jam on this year, throw it at me. I love you all so much. Oh, and if anyone is interested in working with me, I feel like I've been talking about this a lot. I'm fully booked. I have some spots opening up in March still and April. So if you are interested in knowing what that would look like, how I can support you in building, growing, and scaling your business your way. I'll drop a link for a discovery call. Book a call with me, very low pressure. I would love to connect with you. All right, happy new year, love you all, and I'll see you next week, bye.